Happy Sunday to everyone present here and of course those that have joined us on the internet. We want to pray that the good Lord of heaven will bless you wherever you are. Amen. We continue by singing together from our hymn book, Sacred Songs and Solos, hymn number free, free, free. 333 that says, Lord, teach us how to pray aright. Amen. We would like our internet audience to know that um, if you live locally or you are visiting locally and you like to join us, 
You are very welcome. This is the Apostolic Faith Church, located on number 95 Fenham Road, the headquarters of the Apostolic Faith Church in the UK. We have another branch in Bexley, but if you live around here and you like to come in, you are very welcome. You have only missed a wonderful prelude of brass ensemble and um, a number from the choir, Awake, Put On Thy Strength O Zion. And you can join in the rest of the service as we would like now to sing together and continue from there. But um, if you cannot make it to this place, wherever you are, we want to believe that the Lord is there with you, yes. as he is here with us, as his blessing here, we are sure that um, it will bless you there too. Let's stay verses 1, 3, and 6. Verses 1, 3, and 6. Out of all the verses that we have, just those three verses. Lord, teach us how to pray aright. From the same hymn book, 312. We don't need to worry about that. They need to play a tune that we can all sing. So I'm just telling them the tune that they should give us. So that's why I face them. 312. Once more, O oh Lord, we pray. And that is what we are here to do today. Yes. And there is no doubt that before we all got here, God knew that you are coming. God knew I would be here. I always say that even the very seat you are seated, God has already known that before you got here. And there is that assurance in our heart that as we are here to pray one more time, yes. the Lord will answer our prayers. Yes. We're taking all the three verses of that three, one, two. Thank you. 
that is good singing. Good singing. 305. 305 will be our next song. It's going to be that special tune, and we don't have that tune, so you may just put your instrument down and sing along with us. And we have a grand choir with the orchestra joining us to sing Pray On, Pray On, Believing Ones. The Lord will answer prayer. The Lord is still answering prayer. And the Lord is going to answer our prayers today. Let's sing this one again prayerfully, sitting down, all the three verses. Pray on, pray on. before we have congregational prayer, which will be given by Brother Arthur, will be number 332 from the same hymn book, Pray, Always Pray. We're going to sing verses 1, 3, 5, and 7. Four verses. 1, 3, 5, and 7. The last one, which is the seventh, on that, we will all stand up, and then we have congregational prayer. Pray, always pray. The Holy Spirit, please.
Let us pray. Oh Lord our God, we praise your holy name. We thank you, O God, for your mercies, your love, your care, your guidance. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who you sent to die for us, to open this true and living way that we all might go in. We thank you for the gift of life. Amen. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for a time like this that you have given us to come to your house. Thank you, Father. To hear from you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, descend. Amen. Through your Holy Spirit, descend, O oh Lord. Amen. We know you have not forgotten us. We have seen your mighty hand over us yes. from day to day. Lord, today is going to be a special day for us because we know you are going to open the windows of heaven. You are going to pour down your blessings upon us, blessing of salvation, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, healing, protection and care. You are going to do wonders, Lord. Manifest yourself here, O God. Lord, descend. Amen mighty power break down the shackles of sin and the lives of your people help us to live for you that we may trust and obey for this is the only way we can have your blessings Lord give us willing hearts humble hearts melt our hearts oh Lord break down the shackles of sin oh Lord Yes, Lord. We want yes, you to Lord. send us an abiding revival. Amen. Revive us again, O oh Lord. Amen. You're going to speak to us? Yes, Father, speak through your servant. Amen. Wonderful words of life. Amen. And when we come to the altar of prayer, mm-hmm. Lord, meet us. Amen. No, you know all our different circumstances. Mm-hmm. And we trust you to undertake for us, Amen. Lord. Father, bless us today in a special way and make us a blessing. Thank you, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.
taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 11. St. Luke's Gospel, the 11th chapter I read from the 5th verse. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and I have nothing to say before him and he, and he from within shall answer and say trouble me not the door is now shut my children are with me in bed I cannot rise and give thee I say unto you though he will not rise and give him because his friend is because he's his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Amen. Seek, and ye shall find. Amen. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receive it, Amen. and he that seeketh find it, yes. and unto him that knocketh it shall be opened. Amen. And if a son shall ask bread, and if a son shall ask bread of any of you, that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion, thirteen and the last. If then, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Amen. Who can move the mountains that are hindering you today? Clear them from the way. Who can prove his power when a Christian kneels to pray? Yeah. It is Jesus. He's the one. Jesus, force of power in his mighty and divine. He's the one who healed the sick, turned water into wine. Jesus, he 
his hand. Who can give you powerful service and the strength to stand? Who can give you grace for the living may demand? It is Jesus, is the one. Jesus holds the power in his mighty hand divine. He is the one who healed the sick, turned water into wine. He makes all things possible, and he is a friend of mine. Blessed Jesus, he is the one. Jesus holds the power in his mighty hand divine. He is the one who healed the sick, turned water into wine. Reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke, 18th chapter, reading verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them, that's Jesus, to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. May God help us to pray always. Amen. May God help us not to faint. Amen. May God help us not to lose heart. May God help us not to grow tired and weary. Amen. May God help us not to give up, Amen. but to keep praying. Amen. May the Lord give us the spirit and love for prayers. Amen. If you don't like prayer, pray that God will help you to love prayer. Amen. That's a prayer in itself. Yes. Please help me, Lord. To love to pray. Amen. And he will answer your prayers. Amen. It has been a great time, I can tell you. A wonderful time indeed. Yes. That we have been having with the Lord for these past few days. And we want to continue with that. Just in case, as a result of work schedule, or as a result of other challenges, you've not been able to join. I want to pray that um, before the um, schedule runs to an end, that the Lord will give you to an opportunity Amen. to take part in that uh, uh, corporate prayer that has been called by the church. It is a wonderful thing. It's a great thing. And I want to pray once more that may God help us not to faint, Amen. but to help us to keep praying. And when we pray, to pray are right. And even if there is any price to pay, in order to do that, may the Lord please provide so that we can pay that price. Amen. Jesus gave us a parable here to encourage us that prevailing prayer made to God shall not go unheeded. <laughs> that we should keep on praying. And I want to encourage you that it is the same with all the prayers that you have been praying. God will answer every prayer. Amen. Actually, God answers all prayers. Amen. Many times we may not see the answer immediately, but that doesn't mean God has not answered. God is in charge. He chooses to do what he wants to do at a time that he wants to do it. I want to believe that the aspect of importunity or waiting or perseverance or, or, or just uh, uh, keep praying to God is so important that Jesus Christ used two parables to teach one gospel truth. Yes. The one that we read in the book of uh, chapter 11 that we read about uh, uh, the persistent friends 
And here now we have a case of a persistent widow who will not take no for an answer. There are some prayers like that that we have to, that's why Jesus Christ is giving the parable. There are some prayers that we need to let God know, I don't want no for an answer. I cannot tell you what that prayer will be. That will be between you and God. That you want to tell God, no, for an answer, mm -mm. this one, I want you to do it. And if God eventually says, I'm not doing it, he will still give you something that will assure your heart that um, he has answered your prayers. So this question must be so important that Jesus Christ decided, let me expose the devil to my children. Let me make it clear to my children that when you pray and the answer doesn't come immediately, keep praying. Yes. Yeah. That's why in the first parable that we read in the book of um, chapter 11 of St. Luke, that friend that will not want to wake up, but that one just kept on knocking, you must open. I have visitors, they must eat. And I know you have that food in your house. You must open. You have no choice. So it's like, you wanted to sleep, you couldn't sleep. I better open the door. I better give it. And now in the one that we have before us, yeah, we have the case of an unrighteous judge. He doesn't, he, it is a judge that doesn't care for anybody. But this widow is trying to say, I need vindication. And I know you are the one who can do it for me. So I will keep on coming. And that's exactly what happened. And Jesus Christ uh, uh, was bringing out that point. Look at verse 5 of chapter 18 that we just read. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Jesus Christ is trying to say that don't let the devil tell you that you are troubling God. We are not troubling God. God is the one that says that we should pray. Yes. And he will never grow weary to hear our prayers. Yes. May God help us to pray. Yes. Verse 7 says, And shall not God, uh -uh, if this unrighteous judge eventually will do this, and shall not God avenge his own elect? which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? The promises of God are sure. Yes. They are yea. Yes. They are amen. amen. But don't let the devil deceive any of us. We need to pray to claim those promises. Yeah. Don't let the devil say he has promised that he will do it. And so I can just sit down. He will do it at his own time, when he wants. No, the word of God enjoins us to keep praying. The widow here decided I must keep praying and I, I will get my answer. And God, uh, um, and he, he got, she got her answer. And that is the same thing that we will do. In the Bible, we have many examples of people that will not give up. And I don't know, perhaps some people have been coming for these uh, uh, days of prayer meeting that have been scheduled in this church. And for those of you joining us uh, um, on the webcast from wherever, that you've been partaking of this special time, and it looks like that problem is not moving. It will move. Yeah. God is working on it. Yeah. Don't let the devil tell you that, uh-uh. I've gone now once, I've, I've, I've been there one week, uh, two weeks, and it's, it's even like everything is still mounting up. That's the way the devil will want to interpret it. But I want to assure you today that the Lord is answering your prayers. Amen. Because we have many examples that tells us that when we persist in prayer, if we keep praying, the Lord will surely answer our prayers. Amen. You remember the case of Abraham? who stood before the Lord when the Lord told him that I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. We don't know how many hours or how long he stood there when he started with God, if you will find 50 people, then 40 people. So don't take that to be two, three minutes prayer. It's a, it's a, it's a great prayer between uh, 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 go, uh, between. Abraham and what he was telling God to do. 
until he got to, okay, 10. I will still spare the people. Did God answer his prayer at last? God answered his prayer because Lot and his household that were there, that perhaps among those that Abraham was thinking about, my brother is still there. Lot is there with all his household. And you're going to destroy that place. The way land that God eventually spared Lot and um, people of his household. Of course, the wife who will not have faith eventually perish. May we not perish? Yeah. Jacob, do you have a restitution to make? You can do it with prayer. Yeah. Jacob was returning home to go and make restitution and, of course, to go back home. And part of uh, what he needed to do to settle back home would be the restitution with uh, uh, his brother that he had supplanted. And now when he now heard that Esau is coming with 400 people, oh, I need God now. I must do something. The Bible tells us that he prayed all night. He prayed until he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I don't think that is going to be a five minutes prayer. That doesn't mean that God doesn't answer one minute prayer. Don't misunderstand me. But we are looking at a, a prayer with perseverance. Prayer that you just stay on it until God will touch you. And will tell you that I've answered your prayer. God answered him. And we know how Jacob eventually found grace in the sight of his brother Esau. How about Moses, who fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, when God said he was going to destroy the children of Israel? No, no, no. He stood there without food, denying himself, and he kept on telling God, no, no, God, what will people say about you? What will people say about all that you have promised? You must spare them. You must have mercy upon them. He prayed through to the extent that eventually God gave another to a table of uh, a stone containing the commandment that he had broken before. How about Elijah? Elijah, God had told Elijah, God had promised Elijah that go and show yourself to King Ahab, I will bring rain. Elijah could have just said, God has said he will bring rain and wouldn't need to pray. But Elijah prayed. After he has done all that the Lord wanted him to do, he did all that. And then he now started to pray. God, you said you will bring rain. Now you need to bring rain now. The Bible tells us that he sent his servant first time. Go and see whether there is any sign of rain. We don't know how long it took. There was no sign of rain. First time, second time, third Fourth, Elijah could have said, well, God said he would do it anyway. Maybe I'm, you, you know, that's when this, the devil will come and be preaching another sermon. And we'll be telling you something else God has said he would do it. You have been checking. Maybe by checking you are even committing sin. I don't know what kind of sermon the devil preaches this day to any of us, but he has his own sermon. Let yes. may God help us not to hear the sermon. Yeah. Elijah kept on Pray, and then on the seventh time, he didn't know something will happen at the seventh time. He just kept on praying. May God help us to keep praying. Yeah. And the seventh time, the servant returned. I saw a hand. Oh, that's it. The Lord has answered my prayer. Yeah. Get ready. There's going to be abundance of rain. Yeah. And the rain came heavily. Yeah. But remember, before that happened, Elijah persisted. Elijah persevered. Elijah stayed there. How about Hannah? Is there something so precious that you have been asking God to give you, to do for you? Yours may not be uh, children. God has given you so many. Yours may not be mine. Mine may not be yours. We all have our different ones. And we can learn something from the way this lady prayed, the Bible tells us that he went out to worship with the family yearly. She didn't give up. Whenever the family would go, 
to Shiloh to pray for worship, she will go. This year, nothing happened. Another year, nothing happened. Another year, nothing happened. But thank God for Hannah. Amen. I will keep going anyway. Amen. One day it will be my year. Yes. One day it will be my turn. Amen. Keep praying, brother. Keep praying, sister. One day your turn will come. Amen. God will remember you. Amen. The Bible tells us, as she was going year by year, year by year, the Bible says that God remembered Hannah. Amen. Have we not said that this year is a year of our remembrance? Yes. When our fire will be opened before the Lord? Amen. When we deal with our cases? Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That's what he did when Hannah persisted. Our year of remembrance came. And that's how we had Samuel who became a great prophet of God. And that's what the Lord is going to do for us. Yeah. We are told of Jesus Christ himself in the Garden of Gethsemane. How he prayed that his sweat was like blood. Mm -hmm. Can you just imagine that? Mm -hmm. Is that going to be a prayer of, um, you, you know what I mean? That's a serious prayer. Mm -hmm. That's a prayer with determination. Yes. Amen. May God give us the spirit of prayer. Amen. Yeah. We are told that um, the disciples also learned that from Jesus, and they persisted. They have been given the promise that the Holy Ghost will come upon them, and they waited. And they waited. Jesus did not tell them the time. He did not tell them the day. And I want to believe for most of our prayers, we just know that the Lord is going to answer our prayers. He has not said that it's going to be on the 4th of July or the 5th of June. He can say that to some individuals, no problem. But if he has not mentioned that to you, keep praying. Your date is approaching. Amen. Your time is approaching. Amen. The disciples gathered together. They continued. The Bible tells us that they continued in prayer and supplication. For 10 days they were praying. The Bible says that 120. I started thinking. As I was meditating on this, could it be, and could it be, the Bible didn't say so, but could it be that the disciples at that time, they were more than 120? Could it be that some people joined day one, day two, and day three, or even before them, before they started the prayer, and then they said, I'm not going to be a part of this? Could it be? When they, were, they have not been told that it's going to be for 10 days. But heaven has that record. And after they have prayed for 10 days, the Bible says that the time came Amen. and the Holy Ghost came. Amen. That which they were praying for, it, it happened. We thank God for that. Amen. That is what the Lord is going to do for us. Amen. The Lord will answer all our prayers. Amen. If we keep coming, if we keep praying, we talk about Daniel. Daniel learned the lesson of persistence, even though he had prayed many times and God answered just like that. You think about Daniel when there was a case of we are going to kill all the uh, magicians and all, all the uh, people uh, that are supposed to help the king to interpret the dreams. We are told that when Daniel and his friend heard, they decided to pray. Yeah. And God answered them just like that. Yeah. God knows what he will do instantly. Yeah. God knows why he will delay certain things. Mm -hmm. But our own is whether he answers instantly, whether he says, I'm not going to do it now, but later, we just want to wait on him. Yeah. May God help us to wait on him. Yeah. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 2, we have something there that is very encouraging. Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books, the number of the years, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he will accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Now, Daniel knew the promise of God to deliver at a certain time. And he knew too that the time is approaching. Oh Lord, before these people sin again. Oh Lord, before the anger of God is kindled again. Oh, Lord, before anything happens again, I better quickly intercede here. 
I better quickly come in here and pray. He knew that God's promise is one thing. Claiming that promise in prayer is another. You can learn a lot from the prayer that Daniel prayed in that chapter 9. It's wonderful. And there are the things we too can include in our prayers. You look at from verse 3. He was talking there. I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. It is not a sin when we are burdened that we want to say that I want to deny myself of all the pleasures, even food and drinks. There's nothing wrong in that. We have examples of that in the Bible. When the burden is so great, and we say, no, I will take the food, then become secondary. Drink becomes secondary. You just keep on calling upon God. And that's what Daniel did here. Verse 5, we have sinned. This is a good way to pray. It's a good way to look at our situations. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophet. Verse 7, O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces. Verse 8, O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face to our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. Do you see the, what Daniel was just kept on mentioning? We have sinned. We have sinned. We have sinned. May God help us Amen. to look into our lives. Amen. And if the Spirit of God is putting a finger on anything in your life, in my life, and we are brushing that aside, come here 31 days that we have said we are going to pray here. Nothing will happen. Confession of sin is very important. Mm. To go before the Lord and say, God, search me. Mm. Just let me know. And once God uh, uh, reveals that, confess it to the Lord. Mm. He will surely have mercy on you. Yeah. He will answer that prayer. You know, the answer came immediately. Uh, you can read the rest in terms of content of that prayer there. But if we jump to verse 20, it says, And while I was speaking mm. and praying mm. and confessing my sin, mm and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man, Gabriel, whom I have seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me Amen. about the time of the evening oblation. May God help you and I to keep praying until we are touched. And he said, while I was still praying. Hallelujah. Instantly. We have many testimonies of God doing things like that. Instant, before you even finish. Because he knows what you want to ask anyway. And he knows the desire of your heart that you haven't got another alternative that is the only one you are depending upon. So before you finish that prayer, he answers. Praise God. Amen. God is still doing that today. Amen. And you, you, you look at verse 23. I circled it in my Bible. It says that uh, when the answer came, uh, at the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth. May God encourage us. Amen. That at the beginning, once we kneel down, to pray before we even say anything. God has issued a decree Amen. to answer that prayer. Amen. And that's exactly what he enjoyed here. And that's what I believe the Lord is going to do and is doing in our behalf. For the word of God says in Isaiah 65 verse 24 that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, praise God. That is the word of God. Let that encourage you. Let that encourage me that our prayers are not in vain. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. God answers instantly. Amen. Now, another incident. Because Daniel was a man of prayer. Uh, if you look at chapter 10, another thing happened that Daniel now needed to still go before the Lord. 
He needed to go before the Lord and still pray that God, another thing has happened. Please, you did this before, you did that before, just as we pray. Now something has happened. I want you to do this again. In those days, chapter 10, reading verses 2 and 3. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Daniel decided that this incident, I need to take it to the Lord in prayer, and he decided to be praying. And he continued to pray. Let's move to verse 10. And behold, a hand touched me. I just love that. Did you remember what happened in the first prayer? Hand touched him when he was praying, and this time too now, a hand came to touch him, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man of greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then the secret is now to be revealed. Verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day of the three weeks, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. Amen. God is answering your prayers. Amen. Don't let the enemy cheat you. Thy words were heard, and I am calm for thy words. But you know what? That first day I couldn't get to you because of what happened. And that's what we have in verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. Can you see that? The 21 days of waiting. Can you see what was going on, what was happening? That Daniel didn't know. But thank God for Daniel. He kept praying. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now, I circle that in my Bible. A time of now. Amen. That war is now over. Amen. We have fought that war and we have won. Yes. Now, I have come with the first answer, the decree of heaven, the edict of heaven that was issued right from the first day. Now I have brought it to you. This time, God permitted a hindrance. Before, no hindrance can come in. And I want to think that devil is always there every time. But when God says, no, 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 keep aside. Let the answer go through. The answer will go through. And when he comes with his tactics in one way or the other, and God says, you want to, you want to play? Go on. Keep on playing. Keep on doing it. Now let's look at this. Devil has his own messenger to go and block the answers coming from heaven. And the great God of heaven, Amen. the maker Amen. of heaven and earth, Amen. the potentate, Amen. the only true God, Amen. who made even the devil, yes. sent out his own messenger to you. Amen. Now two messengers, now going to deliver their uh, master's wills. Which one will conquer? Devil is a liar. Yes. Devil is only trying. Yes. May God give us that boldness. Yes. One of the veterans of our church have gone through things like this and they know the importance of prayer. Says this. The soul that will live close to Jesus is he who spends much time in prayer. Although it may not always please us, it is that which releases us from care. Then talks about Elijah, talks about prophet Daniel. Now he says, the Savior now looks for prevailers who will pray with a confidence bold. Amen. May God help you and I. Amen. We need that confidence. Yes. Otherwise we give up easily. Yes. Who will pray with confidence, with a confidence bold? Will you join this band of availers 
and pray till the heaven unfolds. You pray until the hand will touch you. You pray until you get an answer. That is what we call pray through. Young people take us up on praying through to mean something else. I don't know what they mean. But praying through simply means you pray until you get an answer. Amen. And you know that answer is coming from God. Yes. If you have been asking God to do something for you, and there is a roadblock mounted, don't worry. Reinforcement is coming. Amen. Who send the reinforcement? Well, God sent the first angel, taking the answer to Daniel, and God is the one from heaven too. Okay, he, need, he will need more reinforcement. And then he sent from heaven too, to join that one. And then, didn't they overcome him? Didn't they win the battle? Let's think about this. How about by the time that angel will arrive, Daniel had gone. Think about it. That answer will be taken back to heaven. That is why it is good for us to importune. That is why it is good for us to persevere. That is why it is good for us to keep on holding on, waiting, keep praying, no fainting, no tiredness, until I hear from God. And God will speak. Yes. For you don't want that answer to come, and you are nowhere to be found. The enemy may be telling you it's getting too long. It's getting too late. You need to do something. Don't do anything. Let God do it. Yes. Actually, you never know. That thing you are asking for, it may be for years now, but the very first day, you had that desire in your heart. And you open your heart to heaven, God has sent the answer. Amen. And the answer is on the way. Amen. May the Lord give you the grace. Amen. May the Lord give you the long suffering. Amen. May the Lord give you the patience Amen. to say, God, I'm waiting here. Amen. It is your promise. And I'm waiting on it. And I'm claiming it. And I know you are going to do it. Amen. Even whether it is um, individual prayers, because I know we pray individually, and we should. We must. Very essential. And then when a corporate one is called to, it is God's, God's injunction. Join that. You never know when God is going to answer. You never know where God is going to answer. Or has he told you that it's only when you pray alone? I'm not in any way saying that he has said that it's only when you pray together. Since you don't know, won't you want to do everything possible? Since you, wouldn't you want to take every opportunity, every advantage, since you don't know when it will happen? Because it's going to happen. Yes. Jesus is whispering, I'm coming still. Help is on the way. Amen. Daniel and the angel persevered. The help came. The obstacles was removed. All obstacles were removed. Now I am come to make thee understand. That thing that you are asking for. I am now calm. Yeah. Waiting time is over. Yeah. This is your answer. Yeah. Let us do the same thing. Yeah. And the Lord is going to answer our prayers. Yeah. The Lord is going to rejoice our heart. Yeah. This month, one of those who conducted during the week said, at the end of this special time, this church, all our churches, yeah. even as individuals, yeah. we are not going to remain the same again. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. just because we decided we are going to persevere. We are going to stay on it. And the Lord will continue to answer all our prayers. Amen. God bless you as you even try this afternoon to come before the Lord on these altars. And you say, Lord, I'm staying on it. Lord, I'm standing on it. Lord, I keep on expecting. Lord, I know you can answer me instantly. Lord, I know you can delay for a reason. I'm calling upon you. Amen. You will answer my prayer. Amen. The altars are open. Come forward and pray. And the Lord will bless you as you do so.
Heavenly Father, Amen. we thank you. Yes, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Amen. We are before you. Amen. Come and answer our prayers. Amen. We give you thanks. Amen. Accept our thanks. Amen. Lord, answer every need. Amen. Answer every quest. Amen. Answer every prayer Amen. that shall be prayed in this house. Amen. Lord, touch us. Amen. Help us to continue yes. praying yes. until we feel your touch. Amen. Lord, come and bless us. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.